Saul Weisenberg is a white-collar criminal defense attorney. He was the top deputy to special counsel Ken Starr during the Whitewater and Lewinsky investigation. Okay, Saul, I want to start with you because I'm trying to understand to see if you have an idea of what you think Michael Cohen's strategy is this week in, what, in trying to get the very public attention of the special prosecutor. I really don't know exactly what his strategy is. I think it's just as likely that he's still trying to get a pardon as it is that he's trying to get to get uh, the Southern District or Mueller interested. I mean, the Southern District, typically what happens in a case like this, uh, when a U.S. Attorney's Office is investigating a case, when they feel that they know enough, they call up the defense attorney and they say, come on in and we'll tell you what we've got and you can tell us what your guy can offer us. My understanding is that Southern District has not been ready to talk to uh, Mr. Cohen yet. So it's, it's, and as other people have pointed out, it's very weird if you want your guy to be a government witness, it's very right. weird to be going out and talking about what he's going to say on TV. No prosecutor likes that. Well, so is it uh, possible? Have your spokesman doing that. Look, I've been, according to some folks I've talked to that are close to, to, the, to the legal team of Michael Cohen, um, they believe this is an intentional leak to discredit Michael Cohen and that it's about, and it, they think it's coming from Giuliani in an attempt to discredit him with Mueller. I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, anything's possible. I don't, uh, that doesn't make much <laughs> sense to me. Now, if they know, if they know that the news is really bad. Uh, right. in this area. It could be a thing where they're putting it out now and so they can say old news later. I mean, the interesting thing here is this is very, if it's true what Cohen is saying, it's certainly very embarrassing to the president and it may pretend uh, problems for Don Jr. because of his congressional testimony. Right. But in terms of the actual meeting and what took place in the meeting, uh, it's very unlikely that it's that it's a crime or that it's a conspiracy, assuming that nothing went beyond that meeting. There's right, a, it's about there's a federal action, right. Is there action after the meeting? That's where the crime may have taken place, right? Right, and there's a law. There's a campaign finance law, Title 52, U.S. Code 30121, I believe is what it is, that says if you're a foreign national, you cannot don't you cannot uh, offer or donate money or a thing of value to an election, election campaign. And if you right. are working for that campaign, you cannot solicit, accept, or receive. Solicit, accept, or receive. Right. And when you think about this, as, as embarrassing as this episode was, this was not instigated by the Trump people. It came, uh, that email right. came from the Russians, and they sat down with him for, for 20 minutes and left. So I think in terms of criminal exposure directly for that meeting, uh, there's not much chance of that. Right. But the real question is, in addition to Don Jr.'s congressional testimony, is what happened after that? Well, you know, there was a lot of uh, time left in the campaign. Right. And, uh, you know, what happened? And that is something that Mueller probably knows much more than, than we do about. To improve Michael Cohen's credibility, if, if you need this testimony, and he's, you know, he's, and all he is is basically he was somehow observed in some form that Donald Trump Jr. informed his father of this meeting beforehand. But all you have is his word, right? You don't have a physical piece of cooperating evidence, tape, whatever. How would you go about trying to make Michael Cohen credible to the grand jury? Well, it's not the grand jury you're worried about. It's a, it's a trial jury <laughs> yeah, somewhere, it, that, ultimately. And, and I think the way you make somebody like credible like that credible is have them plead to a serious felony so they can stand up and say, yeah, uh, I've had some credibility problems in the past, just like my employer who I served for 20 years, and I'm taking the blame for it. I'm accepting responsibility. Uh, I've pled to a felony. I may be going to prison. I mean, that's the typical way a prosecutor would do it. Hey, so final, final out question for you. The other thing that's sort of been uh, sort of gnawing at me this week. Is it possible Mueller's already said no to a, a sort of a queen or a king for a day meeting with Cohen, and, and that's why this is so public? Well, anything is possible, but I, I, I doubt it. I really do. You think uh, it, that would it, be it, unusual. The, the way these queen for a day agreements are, are written, they're really not worth the paper they're written on from the perspective of the defendant. Their loopholes in them are big enough to drive a truck through. So 
Mueller would lose nothing by having such a such a session with uh, with Michael Cohen. And would you expect a session like that to happen sooner rather than later, given where Michael Cohen seems to be at this point? That's the kind of session where, generally speaking, a prosecutor wants to do that when the prosecutor feels that he or she is ready and has a good enough grasp of the case, because you don't want to end up sealing a deal with somebody before you right. find out everything that they've done. And I would and just urge people to keep in mind, when you talk about all this stuff, focus on what the crime is. I understand there are larger issues, political issues, but, you know, what are the alleged crimes? What we're talking about is either, uh, either yep. a conspiracy to, do, to violate these campaign finance laws or a conspiracy or an agreement uh, right. having to do with hacking of computers. And so that's really the areas where uh, people around the president right. and potentially the president are vulnerable. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.